welcome to Teachers Off Duty. If you've never joined us before, my name is Rebecca Rogers. I'm R Rogers World on all social media. I'm Lauren Woolley, Mrs. Woolley and Fifth on all social media. And I am Brie Richardson, uh, Irritated Honest Teacher Vibes because this mic I got a shook and jive from side to side. <laughs> and then I am Devin Siebold and I am tall so I'm used to the bending down over my so <laughs> I have no sympathy whatsoever for uh, you. The disrespect. <laughs> Ooh, the disrespect. We told you. You can leave now. We thought she was a good guest, but I guess you can go. Okay. All right, so what we're... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Dang. We I do, this, know, we do this on tour all the time. Mm-hmm. What kind of kid were you in school? Uh, I was I was good. I, I was weird, though, in the sense that I was <laughs> very highly intelligent, like national merit scholar, top of the class um, on on the the down low no like oh, I would, down I, low. I, I played like i didn't want anything to do with it but truthfully like it was all a's and was it and i you would get basketball? mad like i would get mad too because like the teacher would be like well we have our first hundred percent on the exam and i'd be like don't say it's me don't say it's me and they'd be like devin c i'd be like oh and, and I was like, well, you know, I took some guesses. And, uh... <laughs> Were you one of those kids that thought it was lame to get yes. good grades? Why it, is that a thing? Wait, was it because you were an athlete, though? Uh, maybe. I was I was an athlete. Uh, and, yeah, maybe. I think it was. I, and the thing was, I went to a college prep school and then uh, got recruited to play basketball. They were like, they called me up and they're like, we have the number one uh, point guard in the state. We have the number one power forward in the state. We need the number one center in the state. They're like, do you want to join us? And I was like, yeah. And so I went to a school that was 15 people in my graduating class. Oh, wow. And But wow. We, we all went on to college scholarships for sports. And all of us were And top I thought my school friend. was small. And we went what? straight to the right. state championships. Dang. Just our very first game, we won 120 to 12. Whoa. And it was versus Cyber <laughs> Creek. And I, I want somebody to confirm this. It was the first game they ever played in Cyber Creek's gym. And my coach goes, go out there. And and just just run the run them down. And I was like, okay, okay. So we got there, and at the end of the half, it was like seventy to two. And he goes, I'm trying to get this game stopped. Uh, <laughs> and then <laughs> like, the, the this score. is the best part, though. The last play of the game, we had this guy Willie as a point guard. Willie. And our coach goes, hold the ball. And Willie did not hear. <laughs> And oh, no. Willie went down the lane, dunked, and shattered <gasps> their backboard on the very first game they ever played in oh their gym. Oh my god! And oh. we walked off, Dang like, it, Willie. beating them by a hundred points. And uh, it was it was bad. I would uh, be so, so mad as a coach. Them yeah. and I'm like, that's not good court. sportsmanship. Yeah. I would have yeah. been like, here's my letter of resignation. I'm no longer going <laughs> to coach basketball anymore. Yeah. Clearly, yeah. I, need to go I am at inferior. Yeah, yeah. Clearly, I, I remember that game. But yeah, so I was I was an athlete, but I also didn't think that getting the good grades was something to like brag about. I, yeah. I, unlike Lauren, uh, you know, who uh, told everybody. Uh, but it was, <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Oh my god! Okay. I'm just kidding. But you said you were a teacher's pet. No. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I was. I, I was, was not a teacher's pet. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about teachers' pets, and I mean, kind of like twofold. It could be a teacher's pet, as in like a student, or teachers' pets, as in like classroom pets. Well, I have a question about like what is a teacher's pet because I feel like some people think of teacher's pet as like the kid that just gets the good grades, and then mm-hmm. other people think of teacher's pet as like. The tattletale. Mm-hmm. What would you guys define a teacher's pet as in in high school? So, like as seniors, I don't know if you guys your schools did this too, but we had like senior superlatives where oh, like yeah. right, you right, got right, voted yeah. on for things. Okay, I was up for two different ones. I was up for best dressed. Oh, thank you. And I was up for teacher's pet. <laughs> <laughs> And I lost best dressed, but one teacher's pet. But I was voted teacher's pet instead. And mm. I like to like the day I got voted it. I was like, "You've got to be kidding me!" Oh. I'm like, "This is my high school legacy. Oh. I am the teacher's pet." And like they always chose like a like a male and female for each one. But it was just like me and this other kid that I really didn't care for <laughs> at the time. He he was just kind of like you know whatever. But he was like all excited about getting voted this, and I was like. This is the worst moment of my life oh, no. that I just got voted teacher's pet. And like, I think back to like, I'm like, why would I get voted this? Like, I wasn't a tattletale. Right, like, I didn't right. like go snitch on people. Right. But like, I had good relationships mm-hmm, with, with my teachers. Te- and honestly, like, I, 
I would talk to like my teachers and stuff, just like having random conversations mm-hmm. with them. And I feel like that was something that kind of defined being a teacher to me was that I like I enjoyed school all the way through school, but like I did not have a difficult time building relationships with my teachers. Yeah. And I, maybe that's why. Maybe people were like, well, she's cool with so-and-so, so she's the teacher's pet. Like, And I got good grades. Yeah, but like, I love that. I don't know. I, like, I think some people define teacher's pet as it could be something really negative. Yeah. And like, they're like the snitch that, you know, always gets people in trouble or is like up the teacher's butt all the time. I and can like, honestly say, I, I don't have know. Never, I guess it's different. I have never thought of a single one of my students in the four years I've been teaching as a teacher's pet. I have like, one. I have one. Especially in I elementary can't even school. Think, I never even think of that, like, that title like i can't think of a single (laughs) i had a girl and like bless her heart she was so sweet but after i would every single assignment every single one would always come up to my desk and like clarify like more than she needed to like not just like she was confused and had a question Mm -hmm. i'm talking like we were doing maps where they had to like because geography i think is important like we should know where we're talking about in the world and like well it says to do the water blue, but what kinds of shades of blue should I, I make know, for girl. each? I'm just like, girl, uh, I've had those. Just, just pick a blue. Just pick a blue you, you and go with sense. it. Like those kinds of questions for every assignment. I'm like, girl, I love you, but you're making it hard some days. But do you think that uh, to kind of get down on a psychological level? Go ahead, oh, okay. uh, talk about it. Okay. Get deep. Do you think that's a reflection of their admiration for you or do you think it's a reflection of their uh, fear of failure instilled by the parent? Oh, well, that's sad. if I could now, speak now on I'm a like, personal oh, level. Okay, <laughs> yeah. talk about it. Uh, tell us. Uh, tell us so. Uh, no, no, no. From, it's from okay. the perspective of a teacher's pet. <laughs> no, I, oh, I absolutely craved like the like attention from adults and like my parents, like I had a, I had a good childhood growing up and I know Susan's going to get mad at me again, but like Susan. my parents, <laughs> My parents like didn't always get along growing Mm -hmm. up. So like it was always I was always trying to be like perfect at everything. So I wouldn't like cause any issues or I was always trying to be the best at everything. I think that was just like an internal insecurity of myself. I wanted to be the best at everything. Yeah, we've noticed you tried to take command of this podcast. And uh, (laughs) no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. kidding. Why everybody <laughs> doesn't know your sense of humor? I know. <laughs> She's crying. Lauren's like, I hate no. him. We ain't never having him on here again. I know. I, no, I, 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 on me. I know he's teasing. It's just jokes. Yeah. I know. No, but like, I, I feel like that was the case for me. Like, I really did crave that, like, affirmation from adults that I was doing a good job. Mm-hmm. And so, like, for me, it'll be like, I don't know if I'm thinking back to like elementary school or something. If I was working on an assignment and I would want to go show my teacher and be like, look at how good I did and get that attention back. And that's what I see in some of my students. Like when I when I taught second grade, I distinctly remember at least like three or four teachers, pets, air quotes, students that I had that really would just be like on top of you all day. every day. Can I help you with something? Did you have a teacher's pet in high school? I so I had Cause like maybe it's an elementary thing because no. I'm like I don't feel like I ever had a teacher's pet. It's I think it's more prevalent se- in younger grade. kids because they don't like they don't see. Remember we talked about how that switch happens in sixth grade where you know they're like teachers are no longer my friends. I don't care oh, if my teachers like me like anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, I, no. I think it's a like lot that. Of them grow out of it by high school, but there's a couple. Yeah, in oh, high yeah. school I didn't have. So I didn't have like the grades teacher's pet. I had the students that would try to uh, be personal personal with me. Like they would try to kind of get into my life, you know. So how how are you? You know, how how are the kids? Oh, you got kids? How old are they? What's the, <laughs> you know? And they would try to like get become to know you. yeah, like they wanted to get to know me. Right. Like know? and it was, like was always mutual. weird. I was always pushed back. I was very um I, I was a good teacher and I was personable and I, and I enjoyed my students, but I was always walking that line of this is my job and yeah. this yeah. is my life. <laughs> right. and, and kids would try to, you know, the th- I even, especially when I was doing comedy, because I'm doing stand up comedy and they'd be like, So you're a comedian? I'd be like, Is this funny to you? <laughs> is this a funny class to you? <laughs> and I, would, I would just play with them and they'd be like, Oh, so you're not a comedian? I'm like, Did I say that? 
You know, <laughs> and they could never figure me out. Like, yeah, I'm gonna be they could never figure a me labyrinth out. Labyrinth, and they will never get to know me. Yeah, that's <laughs> the thing is, I would constantly keep them guessing as to who I was, and it was like a mystery. And so I think that that kind of made it a little bit better. And see, I was I like, didn't open up to them. No, I was like, hey, make sure your mama when she send me them lemon pepper wings to school, make sure she <laughs> season my fries on that. Like my kids bring me food to school. Like I didn't. I don't know, my, like maybe my Tristan character can be considered a teacher's pet, but Tristan, if he don't even really snitch on nobody but himself, like, yeah. <laughs> so I don't. It's but like, like they a feel foreign... like they have some kind of relationship with you, like they're yeah. like they're super close, or they can get like I even have some that like even in fifth grade, some that might not be like my best behaved students, mm -hmm. but they're the ones that like think they can get away with stuff with me, and then when I get like mad at them or like I'm thinking of like <laughs> the one girl I had this year. And like she would do something that would annoy me, and I'd be like, "So and so," and she'd be like, "Mrs. Woolley, like I'm just kidding." Yeah, like, nah, like that kind of teacher's pet oh, too. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. ever have that kid that feels you out by thinking they're a teacher pet, and then they throw out a random curse word, and just oh. to see how they, they'd be like, yeah. "This is some," mm, and you're like. <laughs> What did you just say? <laughs> and they're like, "Come on, we're we're cool." Mm -mm, no, mm -mm. no, uh -uh. we can't even write kids up for cursing anymore. They don't no, do you nothing. can't. They don't oh, even do I nothing to them when they cuss. No, we can't. They, no. If you write them up for cussing, well, I don't teach high school. The dean will come down oh, and cuss yeah, you teach out. Teach ten-year-olds. Well, you getting cussed out? No. The ten-year-olds cussing me out in my classroom. You better believe I'm writing them up. Like, no, uh -huh. if we write up a kid for a cuss word, they're like, "Did they say it directly to you?" I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> are you sure?" I'm like, right? Did you, are you sure that's what you heard? I'm like, they. We write it up. They'd be like. Uh, no, they didn't say WTF. They said with the truck. They weren't right. Yeah, they they didn't like we say stupid. That. I'm like, I yeah, heard you. I'm like, mm. clear as day. Say the F word. Didn't it what I said. I said what the cluck. No, you <laughs> didn't. <laughs> F and a C don't sound the same. Gaslighting. The uh, the gaslighting. Well, I had someone send me a story of like this teacher's pet that wanted to be like her so badly mm -hmm. that you know the teacher was pregnant and one day she came to school. And the kid literally like had some kind of sports ball under her t-shirt. And she's like, what are you doing? I want to be just like you. What grade she's level like, is this? This is like freshman in high school. And she's like, this is a little much. Like, this is a little strange. Like, I don't even understand where she got the ball. How she, I have no Girl, idea. Girl, if you don't take no that ball idea. out your shirt and go but sit that's down like somewhere. that's like a little much to <laughs> Wait just Wait a minute. Like... You think I'm a basketball? I thought I was a volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> That is unbelievable. I'm too stunned to speak. That's a weird one. That's, that is I weird. Have, yeah, I, read, that is I literally weird. sat there when she sent it to me and read it like six times. I'm like, that is the weirdest thing I have ever seen. Hey, but shout out to the teachers that had to keep them pets, them them actual class pets alive over the summer. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Yes. You better send no goldfish home with me, baby, because he going straight down the toilet. He my brother teaches science. And so, you know, he thought it'd be a good idea to get a class pet. He got two leopard geckos. And they're just like, oh. they're like this big. Tripping. Yeah, yeah tripping. They're, they're just this big and they have like like when they eat they have really fat tails and their tails can actually fall off and like regrow back on and stuff oh, so dang, anyway he had these two leopard geckos and did anyone watch like Dexter's Laboratory oh, yeah. yeah I love okay. Dexter's yeah. Laboratory he named them Dexter and Dee Dee mm. after Dexter's lab so you know they, they made it through the school year and then he brought them home over the summer and Dee Dee would eat all the grasshoppers and leave Dexter with nothing and Dexter like these things are supposed to live for like 20 years and Dexter died. Oh gosh. I was like oh my god. I'm like you killed him within a year and he's like it's not my fault it's Dee Dee. Just like Darn a woman Dee Dee. to eat all the food <laughs> and leave the man to starve. But, but like I, I'm like I can't like my kids ask me so many times to get a class pet and that's why we have Corner Jim because Corner Jim Corner Jim Corner Jim ain't never gonna die he is immortal shut so. out tell and, tell and Bree had the cockroach in the ceiling yeah <laughs> and it, telling you there's a whole lot and of he class was pets. already dead so I couldn't yep. kill him I had a rat I had a rat oh do you yeah, have a rat and, but not a class pet rat but it was living in my printer. Oh, um, what? It right, was a real right. like rat, and I would pull. I pulled out the printer. Wait, thing you had one, a printer? Yeah, I did. I did a printer. It was old. <laughs> it was really old though. But I pulled it out one day. I pulled out the paper thing to put my new paper in there, and there were like rat droppings and like crumbs oh. from the the like sunflower seeds and stuff that kids would leave oh around. Oh my god! And I was like, oh, and so I emptied it out and I put the paper in there. I was like, that's probably old. And then the next day, I open it up and there's more crumbs and and I was like, oh, he lives here. This is and awesome. So, <laughs> And so I started to like give him 
little offerings. I'd like drop oh some cupcakes and gosh. I'd like slide it in. And then I hear, and then I'd pull it out. I'd pull it out and be gone. I'd be like, "You're welcome." Oh my god! Unintentional pet. So in fifth grade, and I don't know, I don't know if it's like a common lesson or anything like that. But we did a lesson on like, I I don't actually really know what the goal was. I don't remember. I just remember that we. You're fired. (laughs) (laughs) I, I don't really remember what it was on. I just remember that we studied like those little tiny crabs millipedes and something else i can't remember what it was but at the end of the let of the unit our fifth grade teacher was like oh anyone who wants to take any of these creatures home you can this when you were in fifth yes, grade when i okay. was in fifth grade i don't and like i bugs. was not i was like not about the millipede life but i wanted to take some of those i'll, I'll do that millipede home. life <laughs> it, was it a hermit crab like in the little I, shell no no it was or like was it a, a centipede no the tiny little crabs it wasn't a hermit crab it was very small like crawfish. had the little pinchers, not a crawfish, no. <laughs> smaller, okay. very small, like looked like a reg- regular like little mm. crabby crab. Is that how it is? Yeah, just like this. Never mind me the crabs from Finding Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I took them home. I set up their little habitat. I was so excited, and very proud of this. And then we went on vacation for the weekend. I came home and they were not in their cages. <laughs> I had no idea where Uh-oh. they went. Two years later, we like cleaned out my oh, closet and they were like in the corner of my closet. Deceased. No, di- completely dead. No idea how they got there. <laughs> no. no idea how they got out of the cage. Absolutely no idea. But my mom was like mortified. Sorry, Two Michelle. Two years later. Dang. Two years Listen. Later, okay, so I've had, I've had three animals in my lifetime, not in my classroom, but could have been class pets. Um, so I, I had two hamsters before I had one and then like another afterwards, but my, like the hamster, my friend left the cage open the one night and it got out of the cage and it was always like the cage always sat on my nightstand next to my bed. So it like was up like three feet in the air and the hamster somehow climbed down, got up into the bottom drawer of my nightstand where it was like my junk drawer. You just keep all your random stuff. And he like. I had like a scarf in there that a family member had brought back from like Scotland or whatever. And he like made himself like a little bed and was like <laughs> just chewing on some books in there, having a grand old he time. Was his we life. found him the very next day. But like I could I don't know how some of these teachers have hamsters in their classroom because they die a horrible death. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Hamsters yeah. Are, like they get cancer and mm-hmm. then they like die within a few days. It's is very sad. And they like like my one uh hamster actually like he he had a tumor that grew oh. on his neck. Remind me not to get a hamster for Don't Peyton. Don't ever get my a hamster gosh. for Peyton ever. And then, oh and then he went, like he had a stroke and went paralyzed on one side of his body. It was oh, the literal no. worst pet death ever. Oh. And I then, had never known this about hamsters. But technically, no, don't hamsters ever could be the canaries of the classroom. Yes, you know, because mm-hmm. they can. Uh, that you put a hamster in the room, it gets an instant tumor. You're like asbestos. I knew it. And you know, you, you <laughs> no! can just <laughs> you know that really, it's, 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 it's the mold. It's the mold. No, yep. but uh, <laughs> what I thought was funny was okay. So uh, I got married back in 2018, and Jordan and I went on our little mini honeymoon thing the night after we got married and when we got back home it was like two in the morning i walk into our bathroom and we had those like um vessel sinks so they Mm -hmm. were like raised up over the counter yeah and my brother and his uh his girlfriend at the time they filled the bowls with water and got us goldfish and put goldfish in our bathroom sinks and so the next day i was like I was like, yes, we have two goldfish now. I went and bought them like $50 worth of like goldfish supplies and like a new house and everything. I'm like, I'll take it to my classroom. It'll be so great. The kids will love it. And then we put them in the new little house, went to sleep and woke up the next day. They're <laughs> dead at the top of the bowl. Because you got to the water temperature before you put mm-hmm. them in there. And you I thought fix- we did. Everybody knows that. <laughs> oh, I thought we did. Apparently we didn't I do it right. Funny, but it's Fr- funny. They were named Frick and Frack and Frick oh, and Frack died and hard. Dude, that is so weird. My granddad used <laughs> to call me and my and twin Frick and, fl- Frick and Frack. <laughs> Don't try to say that fast. <laughs> yeah, so I refuse to get any classroom pets that are real. Corner Jim is oh. it. Well, now it's Corner Jim and Corner Kim and Corner Tim. They like keep adding to the roster. Oh, they have a child now? Well, 
Okay, so Corner Jim is the original. <laughs> Devin He's probably OG. sitting here like, who the heck is Corner Jim? Okay, so Jim? if you don't know, Corner Jim is Cor- this little Corner stuffed- Jim is, you, didn't, you stayed away from him outside of school. <laughs> <laughs> Where we grew up, Corner yeah, Jim. Yeah, you yeah, didn't them, go down Corner Jim. What, them was corner store people, our parents <laughs> didn't let us hang out with. No, Corner Jim is just this little stuffed mouse that I have in my classroom. I move him around, the kids look for him every day. And he's just kind of become like a character that I created. And then um, they asked for him to have a girlfriend. So that's uh, Corner Kim. Mm -hmm. And she's actually like a big white rat and like bigger than Corner Jim. But they'll move around the classroom together. And then one of my students brought in this little, they they say it's a rat, but it's literally a little blue elephant. I'm like, this is not a, (laughs) this is not a mouse. Mm, He's adopted. But that's Corner Tim. He's adopted. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's what they say. They're like, he's adopted. I'm like, okay. I mean, fine. Whatever, two hearts. two mice parents with an elephant son. Nah, we, just got, so we, we, we just got roaches. This is the last thing roaches. I want is to have to keep another classroom pet alive. It's just right. going to yeah. be like so much work. Yeah. yeah. Nice. In addition to the other work, there's no completion grade for feeding them. <laughs> you know, like you can't just. I can't uh, even keep a plant alive. You think I'm going to have a whole animal there? Well, no. Somebody no. sent me, and I didn't even remember that I got it a while ago. Somebody sent me a story about how, you know, their whole family are marine biologists. Uh-huh. And they have like Classroom the, dolphin. The fish. T- <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they're a student. You going to they jail. were a student. And their parents were marine biologists. And they had tanks of all of these really cool fish at home because they knew how to take care of them. Right. Well, meanwhile, at school, their teacher got or tried to get a fish tank of cool fish, but the kid was like seeing that they weren't being taken care of. Like the right food was not being provided. The different fish in the tank required different temperatures. Like there were fish in the tank that really weren't supposed to be around other fish. Mm -mm. And so he tried to tell the teacher a few times like, hey, I don't think that they're really being taken care of. And the teacher kind of shut him down. So then what he did, like he tried to go to the teacher, he tried to go to the principal, like these fish aren't being taken care of. So one weekend when they had a giant sports tournament, um, he broke into the classroom and just stole the fish. My man, was he a seagull? Like, I've seen this. <laughs> I've seen this. <laughs> <laughs> they jump in the beak. They <laughs> <laughs> get out, get out right now. He's, He's like, like, I've seen this movie he's before. He's a seagull. <laughs> Devin, what get he out. did was. They literally at the his cousin was in the last class of the day, so he kind of cracked the window open so that they wouldn't be seen by the classroom cameras. Did this happen in Australia by chance? Mm-hmm. Did, I have no idea. Three twenty Wallaby Way. Find a Nemo joke. <laughs> they, was it a seagull? I've seen this movie before. <laughs> they climbed into the classroom, literally just took the whole tank, brought him home while the kid was doing something so that he would be on camera so that like he had an alibi. He had a whole alibi and everything. everything. Yeah. Literally, they had a whole plan, and so like. They, the teacher, of course, thought that it was the kid. He's like, well, I was on camera. Like, I obviously couldn't have gone to the they classroom. He was invested, man. And yeah, they, like, literally just stole the fish tank. So what happened to the fish? They, he brought them home. He took care of them. Uh, so he stole, what if that teacher bought them fish with her own money? So you probably a thief. did. Yeah. You fish thief. Yeah. I want my fish back. <laughs> Listen, the principal of my, my high school, uh, not the one I teach at, when, the one I went to, um, a few years ago, actually, he had like chickens. It's like a common thing for people to have chickens and like just, you know, have them lay their own eggs and all that. I live in the we country. They do that in the South. They do that in the South. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like that. We do it in the South. We do it in the South. They do. It's common. I just don't yeah, like birds. Yeah, we do it in the South. So he had like, I don't know, six chickens or something like that in his backyard. And like as their senior prank that year, they actually stole his chickens and then they killed them. <gasps> like, what? yeah, I'm like, Nasty. that for one is thing, terrible. That yeah, is so for one bad. thing, like that's his. First of all, his personal property. I'm sure that they had, you know, that's feelings like for those chickens because they're, they're little family property. pets. And then you, one, you take them, and then you're gonna kill them too. That's not like, a that's prank. That's not a prank. That's cruel to. Oh. That's what right. I was saying last right. episode. I hate when these kids are like, "This is so funny." That's not funny. No, it's not. And it's that's, not. They, yeah. uh, original recipe or extra crispy. Uh, Devin, no. <laughs> no. Well, that I mean, actually, I gotta ask. you reminded me. <laughs> oh, my. You reminded God. me of another prank that these kids did with farm animals once of like this teacher. I, I don't, I don't, this teacher once called a girl fat, like his, his student mm-hmm. fat. 
And he's like, if you don't take care of yourself, you're going to look like the cows on your parents' farm. I'd have been like, yo, mama And so she literally, (laughs) one weekend, just brought a cow to the school. Fun fact about cows, they can go upstairs, but they can't go downstairs. (laughs) And literally (laughs) just let the cow loose. I just see this cow that cannot get downstairs. (laughs) Which is crazy. I didn't notice. That makes me so happy. Just like to take the elevator. I mean, yeah, absolutely. How'd I get the cow down the stairs? I assume, I assume a lot of schools, like my schools always had elevators. I don't know about this one. I'm just assuming that's what they, I never got an update about that it. Song, I just picture being on the, the middle elevator. floor and like it opens and you're like, oh, I'll get the next one. Next <laughs> <laughs> just a cow in the elevator. Well, they you actually, got some milk? they had to shut down school for like a few days because there was just cow manure everywhere after the entire weekend. It was like the kids couldn't go in there. You know what? These that's kids. what you get for calling her fat. I, I mean, I, it's justified. Like, that one's. Yeah. See, these kids be doing some outrageous stuff, but don't call my baby fat. Come back, but I'm going to come up to school. Yeah, mama fat. I'm petty though. Like, <laughs> um, I am petty. I was a bad kid though. Like, like I was a good kid in high school because I wanted to play basketball, but middle school and elementary, I was I was one of those kids that probably made teachers quit. I was a bad kid because y'all were talking about y'all was a good kid. I was I was a bad kid. Maybe that's why I I was never a teacher's pet because I was you like you were you were the anaconda squeezing the life out of us. <laughs> I was about to say, I was the roach in the ceiling. Like, I, <laughs> See, I, I feel, wasn't a teacher's pet. I feel like I was pretty neutral. Like, I feel like I was so, like, I was that kid that was so invested in my sport and cheerleading mm-hmm. that, like, I didn't really take the time to talk to the teachers. Like, yeah. there were a couple that I was like, oh, yeah, I like them a lot. But I don't think I did enough to be, like, mm-hmm. memorable as either good or bad in school. Man, I love my high school teachers. I like, did too much. I love my... <laughs> what you say? I said, I did too much. I love my high school teachers, man. Like, now, yeah. those were the people that I really did want to please because I, I loved my high school teachers. Mm-hmm. Like, they were absolutely fantastic people, like, super invested in the students. Like, those were people that I was just like, I don't want to let them down. No, I so had, I understand what you were saying. Lauren. I had favorite teachers all through school, but yeah, like my and I've said this before on the podcast too. My ninth grade English teacher literally, like, I wouldn't be doing any of the things that I do now if it wasn't for her making me join our speech and debate team. Mm-hmm. And then like, I like I, same thing. I like craved her approval and like aimed to please her all the mm-hmm. time. And like, it it wasn't like. She, you know, she never was like, you, you know, you're not good enough or anything. Right, like, she right, was right. never like that. Right. But it was just, I just always wanted to do better. Right. It was like a respect thing. Like, yeah. you looked up to and, her. But now, like, we're friends. Like, because she was, it was like only her second year teaching back then. Oh. And, like, so, you know, now that I'm out of high school and I teach myself and everything, we coached for years on the speech team. Like, That's we're really good cool, friends Lauren. now. That's cool. But, yeah, I mean, it's, I, you know, I used to hate being called the teacher's pet and mm-hmm. being like, you know, that's such a negative connotation. It does have a negative connotation, But, yeah. you know, now that I'm older, I'm like, you know what? I had good relationships with my teachers. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. Like, yeah. that's awesome. it's fine with me now. But did you ever get tasked? See, I felt bad about this. Okay, but did you ever did get task, tasked I task kids, as so. the teacher's pet? It's the teacher goes, I have to go to the restroom real quick. Lauren, I would like you to watch my class. And instantly, everyone in the class hates you. Not that I can recall. Uh, I... I have never had that personally happen to me, mm-hmm. but I, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't think I've ever done that to a kid. See, when I said, cause I, I thought you was talking about something else when you said task. Cause I was like, no, nah, I task kids. So I'm like, maybe they, those kids were my teacher's pet. But when I say task kids, I mean like they was my little student assistants. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's yeah, the no, thing. It's like, they pass yeah. out papers. You start, but that's not even, it, you're actually giving them more work, but in the other kids eyes, it's like. Oh, you're, you're like playing special, favorites. Yeah. It's like, you want to do this? No. Then let Well, y'all them... bad and y'all right. don't know how to be at y'all seat, so I don't care. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I was like that. Like, I'd get asked to go do things. Like, when I was talking about the erasers, mm-hmm. like, I got sent to do that stuff. Or, oh, like, getting sent, sent out of class, missions. though. That, that, oh, that's... Mm. The kids, kids They will, get mad about that. Yeah, they're yeah, like, they, they, they get to go. Can I go? Boy, you gonna be on the other side of the state if I let you out of this class. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I, I've had that happen. I've never had a teacher go, like... I want you to tell me if anyone's misbehaving while I'm gone. Yeah, Yeah, no, I would never. And that's the thing, like, even I'm mindful of that, too, as a teacher, like, thinking, like, okay, if I pick on certain kids too many times Mm -hmm. to do things or if I pick on certain kids too many times to, like, go on missions. I call them missions. But, like, they... They're going to get ostracized really by their their classmates because the classmates yeah. are going to get jealous or right. they're going to be mad at them for yeah, that. Yeah, I don't ever ask kids to yeah. take names because I'm like, yeah, I teach a, I taught at a public school and they'll fight. So I'm like, I ain't, 
I do, I get another teacher. Hey, can you watch them for a second? I got to go to the bathroom. Because my kids be fighting when I come back. Because the person taking names would have been in swung on somebody because they wouldn't shut up. Or they was trying to talk crazy to them. Like, you ain't even no real name taker. You a fake teacher. I say it to my face. And I'm like, I told you to take names. And you in here fighting that. You going to in-school suspension and to the alternative school. Like, I couldn't let my kids take names because they'll fight. Things escalate quickly. <laughs> yeah, I can't. That's a, that's a long way to go for that, by the way. <laughs> you're, what? you're like, well, if I ask somebody to take names, then you've got like seven kids kids in alternative school i'm like how did it go <laughs> from a name it went to so wrong so fast. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of, it is a lot of yeah. missteps no nah, but i mean i had like i always had students that were like classroom helpers yeah like because one i ain't gonna be passing out these papers every day i don't feel nah. like doing it but two my kids were like some of my kids were lazy too because i would try to let other kids do it and they'd be like no nah, i don't want to do it that's one of the best things about like <laughs> like upper elementary because when you teach young, like younger younger kids you can't have them do tasks and stuff because they can't do it yet right, yeah. but like when you're in fifth grade like i could say like yeah go go fix the library organize the books or yeah. like yeah go hang this up in the hallway and or whatever like, like stuff and like they that. like doing things like that yeah now that like, kind of stuff they like now that i think about it, i do have like you know those students that you can always count on to tell the truth but yeah. like usually when I have to talk to those kids, I'll like go out in the hall right, or something, never, or like I'll pull them. a couple random ones and be like, "Did you see anything?" And just right. to like you know not have them just Cobart be the ops. only one. Yeah, Cobart, Cobart yeah. Sometimes I'd have them save me too because I'd go to pass back papers and I'd be like, "Here you go, here you go," and then I'd look at the name and be like, mm, "I don't know that one." Hey, can you make that pass <laughs> <laughs> I, like, Jeremiah. I, really I, don't know. I got Jeremiah. Or, yeah. I, I could never remember my kids' names, especially at the beginning. I used to always have to put them in the assigned seats. So I was like, especially if they all have been in school together since they were in like third grade, mm -hmm. I'm like, can you come pet these papers out? Because well, yeah, they class know each be, other's names. You ever have like your classes packed? It is kind of new, you know, you, you want to give yourself a little time, but they think you should know names. They do. And like the, on day one. The office will be like, hey, uh, can you send Christian down? And, and you look around, you're like, yeah. And then this one kid's like packing up his stuff. You're like, yes, I yeah. can. <laughs> Absolutely, and then it turns, the and then time. it turns out it's not the kid. He's just a divot, and they're like, "Christian ain't here." It's like, mm -hmm. oh my god! <laughs> and then you have to call back down. You're like, uh, "Listen, I uh, <clears throat> thought he was I in the bathroom. Up. He just he was not. Yeah, I, just, I used know, to always the feel other bad. Christian. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I used to always feel bad because I when the kids had different names but they looked similar yes. and they would be like miss richardson you gave me such and such this paper again and i'm like at that point i just had to start giving them candy because i felt bad i'm like y'all <laughs> look exactly like y'all ain't twins and i was literally just about to say i always have one of those every single year i have year. it and I, if I'm, the one year i had three dominics in one class Oh no! I was like, this is gonna go badly because I like I'm gonna have to. You gotta remember their last name. Yeah, like you're gonna be Dominic, you're Nick, and you're Dom, and that's it. <laughs> like, like, I, like, I cannot you can't remember be the same name. Yeah, I can't remember y'all's names. My kids used to get mad too, and I'm like, at that point, I was just like, hey, I would ask one of the kids who I knew I couldn't remember their name, like I knew I kept mixing up their name. Hey, can you pass out the papers today? Because I know you're gonna get yourself your right paper because I can't remember which one of y'all. And you, you gotta you gotta justify it. You're like, I have 137 students, and they're like, but you're my father. It's like, I can't, I can't <laughs> come on, details. I mean, Dad, okay? You should at least know my name. <laughs> that made me think of like, you know how like, uh, cause you got kids, your first. Your first kid and your middle child, and then when people have three kids, that poor middle child. If a uh, if the school calls about the middle child, the parent be like, "Who? <laughs> uh, that that's not my that's I don't have a child by that name." Oh, you know what? Yes, I do. That's my bad. Why do they always forget about my the middle child? Because I, I had my family staying at my house for the past couple of days, and they have four kids. And she's like, the third one always, people always forget his name. I feel like, bad. The other three, they, they know the oldest, they know the second, they know the youngest, but that the third middle, middle one, middle one it. no one ever knows who he is. <laughs> Like, mom, you forgot to pick me up at school. Who is this? <laughs> <laughs> New number. Who I don't this? know. New number. Who this? I don't know you. But yeah, no, I, I don't think I would ever do a class pet because it would probably i'm just not good like i'm good at taking care of my daughter obviously but a uh, animal like i just feel like i'm not i wouldn't be good at taking care of i would get anxiety over that because i'd yes. be like because they know, stay at school overnight right yeah that was yeah just, yeah wow. we got roaches i'm like the roaches gonna crawl in there and eat whatever and because we the, ro <laughs> the roaches <laughs> in my school ratchet band they're crawling there that, like that's, you, that's why you need to get you need to get a classroom snake 
Heck eat the roaches. No, don't play with me. Because you know, dang well, somebody was like, a kid came in with a snake in their boot bag talking about it was their emotional support animal. Oh Get, if God. you and that snake don't make haste out of here, because Miss Richardson ain't going to be in here. If it's okay. a snake in your book bag, ain't Did anyone else see the TikTok? Like, it was a, a little while ago, but there were teachers that were like, it was during their prep, and they started hearing like scratching sounds coming near like the kids Mm -mm. cubbies and they were like what the heck is that sound so they're going through all the kids book bags Mm -mm. trying to figure out what Mm -mm. it is and they open the one zipper pouch of the book bag and there's a whole box turtle in the (laughs) in the book bag (laughs) they like got the turtle out put him in a bucket and they were like uh we gotta call this kid's parent tell him like hey we got your turtle (laughs) like Like, kids become like them elementary school kids they become in the school the amount of stories of kids with cats and dogs in their book bags yeah. Like, like, how you sneak this out of the house without your mama seeing? You know, she had all three of y'all cats missing. Like, your child just book bag just oh. meowing on the way to school, and you <laughs> ain't, you thought it was your kid making animal noises. Like, you ain't know they had a cat in their book bag. Somebody sent me a story about how she had to make the worst phone call ever. She's like, oh, please don't pick up. And the mom picked up. Oh She's God. like, hey, um, your child got bit by a turtle. And she's like, oh, crap. Like, was he trying to pick it up? No, he got bit on the tongue by a turtle mm. he's, she's like how did that happen <laughs> bro <laughs> your face what you like she's like how did that I happen and he's like well we were at recess and he found a turtle over the fence and like picked it up and tried to eat it oh. like a sandwich and the turtle bit him on the tongue and she's like he's he's okay you know it stopped bleeding and the mom literally all the mom says was you know what that checks out you know some <laughs> parents be knowing that, that kid's like out. i yeah. can see him <laughs> I can see him picking up a turtle. Is his tongue? Did he bite half of it, or just <laughs> the or just the tip? Like he's fine. Just put, again, right? Again, dang Wait, it. Jimmy, will you this stop? This is the third time this week. <laughs> We've been telling him to stop trying to eat turtles. No, that was I such can't. a weird thing. I had a lizard in my class one time, and I'm talking about y'all. I cannot. I can't do bugs. I can't do like when we did the comedy tour. In Florida, y'all got the biggest freaking lizards around here. Like oh, I can't, oh, I, love the lizards. I cannot. I, oh my gosh, I absolutely cannot. They're so fun. We had a lizard in my class, and y'all, I promise, I was in there screaming like I was not the adult in the room. Like, <laughs> like two kids, one of the kids was looking at me like, "Is Miss Richardson serious?" I'm like, "Either y'all get that, cause I'm not getting off this desk until y'all get this lizard." So the kids had to go across the hall to another teacher's class, <laughs> and they were like, "My friend is in there, and his dad did." Blah, 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 blah. So he went and got the kid. The kid came in. And, and got the lizard and took it outside I was like hey I appreciate you future farmers of America because I <laughs> sure wasn't getting off this desk until y'all got have you ever been to here. Mexico no okay because like when we went on our honeymoon we went to like an all-inclusive resort in Mexico and on the resorts they literally just have these like four foot long iguanas absolutely oh, not just, absolutely or that's cats. Miami now you ready for yeah. Miami okay absolutely I'll go not. for the cats they have stray cats that just live on the resorts oh, and they that. have it's like hot. literal it's iguanas lizards? they'll like crawl iguanas. out from the Big trees ones. In Miami? Yeah, tons. We yeah. got two shows in Miami. And you're about to Honest see them crossing the street. Yeah, they'll no, crawl sir. out in the daytime and lay in the trees. sun. Uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't walk <laughs> under a tree. Don't walk under a tree. Yeah. You scared me in New Orleans. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get pickpocketed. Now I'm going to be in Miami to walk down the street like... Is, is that an iguana? There's like gonna be Brie an iguana on my pants. It's like, Brie, do Brie got a tick going on, or what is that? <laughs> I'm just looking for the iguana. Got to keep her on edge. <laughs> yeah, they were cool though. They and they had these. Oh, uh, what are they called? They looked like little, like little raccoons, but they weren't raccoons. Uh, like it was oh, like a um, coyote or something what is it like called? that. Crap, I don't remember the exact name. But like the one night we um, put our our room service tray outside of our oh, door, gosh. and it was like directly outside. And the little raccoon thing came up up the stairs and was literally like we heard like rustling going around outside. I opened the door and he's like sitting there nomming on my leftover sandwich. And <laughs> they were but they were so cute. Like I it was can't. cute seeing well, all the animals. James said like crabs come up across the road in uh where did it, either here or in Vero or something like that. They hide like, in your closet. The crabs? Like Becca. Oh. Callback. Callback. R.I.P. to the crabs. R.I.P. to the crabs. Oh, my gosh. And on that note. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if any of you guys have class pets that you're able to keep alive in the course of a whole school year, let props us know. To you. Because props, yeah, props to you. Um, but thank you so much for watching, and we hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you check out our merch and all of our social medias. Follow us everywhere, and we will see you guys next and time. We are and super also, grateful. Yes. For having Devin Seabold on yeah, the last three yes. episodes. We, I don't think Thanks we've for having cackled me. so Thanks hard in a while. It's we have been a really cackled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
So love y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.